Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. And the bitter cold starts us off here at 6. You're looking live at downtown Detroit where it feels like it's in the low teens right now, which will feel balmy because temperatures are going down from here. Good evening, I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. Forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams is here with what you should know if you're headed out tonight, Kim. Well, you need to know that we're dropping down into the single digits tonight, which means you can only be outside for about 20 to 30 minutes with exposed skin or you are definitely risking frostbite. 23 degrees in Detroit, 20 in Ann Arbor, 17 in Lapeer. Here are our current temperatures, 16 in Flint, 17 in Lapeer, holding on to 22 in Mount Clemens, 25 City Airport, 23 Metro. But the wind chills are in the single digits in Lapeer, also in Howell, Ann Arbor, and in Pontiac. Here's a look at the wind chills out to the west. This gives us an idea of what's coming our way. It's right now three below in Grand Rapids. Look at Green Bay, 13 below, 22 below in Duluth. By tomorrow morning, you will wake up to temperatures in the single digits, but wind chills well below zero. The bright side is that we'll see a little sunshine tomorrow and even more than that on Wednesday. To keep up to date on all this weather that's going on here in Metro Detroit and especially in your neighborhood, go to your favorite app store, type in WDIV and download the free forewarn weather app and then you'll have accurate forecasts right in the palm of your hand. All right, some breaking news on a shooting that had the lodge shut down at rush hour. State police say a 38 year old man was shot three times in the southbound lanes at West Grand Boulevard in Detroit. The man lost control and hit the median wall. Victim was taken to the hospital where he is being treated. Police say evidence was recovered on the freeway. No more to go on than that at the moment. No word right now on a suspect either. The freeway reopened though within the last 30 minutes. Our other top story at six, the mysterious disappearance of three men in Detroit. They were on their way to a party on the city's east side over the weekend and haven't been seen since. And now police are searching for Dante Wicker, Armani Kelly, and Montoya Givens. Victor Williams joins us live with the search. Victor, what do we know so far? Yes, Devin and Kimberly, they were actually supposed to be performing at Lounge 31. Over on Gratiot, unfortunately, they never even made it to the scene to begin with. And ever since, the mother of one of those young men have been frantic. I'll never see that beautiful smile. Lori Kemp and Taylor Perrin can't help but think the worst after the disappearance of son and fiance, 28 year old Armani Kelly, also known as Marley Whoop. I just pray that he's out there somewhere. We need him. On January 21st, he along with two others now identified as Dante Wicker out of Melvindale and Montoya Givens were supposed to be performing at Lounge 31. Sadly, they never made it. He was trying so hard to promote his rap. And do you know how guilty I feel that my son picked up these two other young men? His mother traveled all the way from Oscoda tracking the vehicle Armani was driving using OnStar, taking matters into her own hands. The next day I went by myself and canvassed on uh, Gratchet and stayed there till dusk, passing out flyers. The vehicle popped up in several locations before being recovered from an apartment complex in Warren. Authorities from four cities, Oscoda, Melvindale, Warren, and Detroit, have now been working on the investigation. Sadly, Lori and Taylor say so far, they feel they've been failed by all. Nobody wanted to believe us when the cops had the car and they wanted us to pick it up. They're like, Oh, he's probably just with another woman inside of one of these apartments. But the Detroit Police Department that's now taking the lead says it's doing everything in its power to find the three men alive. We've got license plate readers, we've got green light cameras, and uh, I'm confident that using those tools will help us get the answers that this fam that these families deserve. Realistically, Lori says she understands there's a chance she'll never see her son alive again. At this point, she just wants closure. I want to lay him to rest and try to move on. So sad. We know that Armani was recently released from prison, but he had been working very hard to turn his life around, even starting classes over at Alpena Community College. So if anyone is watching and they know about his whereabouts, you guys are asked to contact the Detroit Police Department as soon as possible. Reporting live tonight, Victor Williams. Local four. Okay, Victor, thank you. A sad update tonight. A 15 year old girl has been found dead in Ann Arbor. Adriana Davison of Sayo Township was reported missing on Friday. 
when she didn't return home from school. This afternoon, her body was found near the athletic fields of Ann Arbor's Pioneer High School. The Washtenaw County Sheriff's Department says the investigation is in the early stages, but there are no signs of foul play. It's a Detroit gem, but thieves continue to target Eastern Market, and business owners say they're fed up. There have been about a dozen break-ins in the last six months, including the one you see here. Grant Herms live at Eastern Market, where uh, people are very understandably concerned. Grant? Yeah, Devin Kimberly, very concerned. It has been break-in after break-in down here, and these businesses trying to bounce back, trying to attract customers, and they're very worried about their tight-knit business community. The video is upsetting. Another break in in Eastern Market. The burglar smashing a window and crawling through the door at 218, a sneaker and streetwear shop in Eastern Market. The thief getting away with more than $5,000 in merchandise. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this, man. So for anybody to take an ink pen out of here, you know, it, it fill it. The video is from November, but the door is still boarded up because the owner, Roland Coit, says thieves haven't stopped targeting the market. After 218, it was Thomas McGee's next door. Across the street at Beyond Juice Eatery, they've been hit three times and stashed down the road two break-ins last week alone. The owners there say they've been forced to sell. I'm more worried about uh, the, the community more than anything, you know, more than myself, right, or more than my business. Roland says police have been helping, but so far they haven't been able to get enough businesses on board for green light cameras. Still, he's worried for the tight-knit business community in Eastern Market. Yeah, every aspect of it from uh, from the sheds to the uh, to the restaurants, to the dining, to the bars, to the, to the retail, which is a new thing here, is, uh, you know, it's not to be taken lightly. Now, they do have cameras here along Fisher Street at these businesses, but they're really trying to get those DPD monitored green light cameras. The problem is they're expensive. They need some buy-in from some more businesses around here. Until then, they're going to have to deal with more boarded up windows, keep them this way, and hoping that it doesn't happen again. Back to you. Sure hope so. All right, Grant. An Oakland County Sheriff's deputy has uh, resigned after a mother and her two sons were found dead in a Pontiac field. Story we've covered uh, quite a bit here over this last week. The bodies of Monica Kennedy, her nine-year-old son Kyle, and three-year-old son Malik were found earlier this month. Investigators say they were not dressed properly for the weather and died of hypothermia. Several deputies had contact with the family, but Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard says one deputy did not do a proper search, and that deputy stepped down last week. Uh, help me Hank alert tonight about a scam that is impacting nearly every corner of Metro Detroit. It's Police say thieves are pretending to be members of law enforcement to get your money. An Inkster woman says she lost her life savings because of it. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester is here with what you need to know so you don't get scammed either. Hank. Yeah, Kimberly Devin, this victim's story is just heartbreaking. So Inkster police on high alert, the sheriff here in Oakland County and the Better Business Bureau all teaming up now to share this important information with you tonight. I mean, it was every penny I had. And for somebody to do that, I mean, I, I, I just don't understand like why, why people do this to people. Cheryl Bird said she was terrified after getting a phone call from what she thought was the Inkster Police Department. Go and buy gift cards or face prosecution. He kept telling me not to hang the phone up or they would pick somebody out to come and get me right away. And he knew what kind of car I was driving. So I figured, you know, the police station, they know, you know, can look up your car or whatever and stuff. And he knew all that about me. Cheryl spent her savings, $400 buying those cards, and then realized she had been duped. Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard putting out this alert on Twitter. He's also heard about this scam happening in Oakland County. So whether they say, you know, you missed being on a jury and if you don't put up some money, there's somebody will come to your door or the IRS or the FBI or the sheriff's office or whatever the case may be, if somebody's trying to intimidate you into providing immediate remuneration over the phone, scam. These spoofing scams are growing. The threats real and the scammers preying on emotion. You're going to go to jail. There's going to be a huge fine. If you don't, the sheriff's going to come pick you up and put, a, put you in the back of the cop car. They're not going to do that. There has to be precedent.
back out here live at the BBB. And here's the deal. We're not just talking about a couple bucks here. The average victim in these scams losing between $250 and $2,000. That is a lot of money. And as you heard there in that story, it's not a lot of money that people can spare right now. We're live here tonight in Southfield. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. Yeah, Cheryl saying it was her life savings. It's heartbreaking to hear what happened to her. Um, Hank, but if someone gets a call like this, what, sh what should they do? Yeah, and you know, Kimberly, it can be confusing because on caller ID, it may say the Oakland County Sheriff's mm -hmm. Department or Inkster Police. Mm -hmm. So if you get that call and it doesn't seem right, call the police yourself directly and find out what the real deal is. Yeah, okay, Hank, we appreciate it.